Hey again, everyone. I just wanted to do a quick summary of what we talked about today, and what we talked about today was exponential growth. So, first of all, all exponential growth problems can be modeled or expressed in an equation that looks like this. So, y is equal to a times b to the power of x. Okay, and each of these parts kind of have a role. So, the y and the x value, of course, th those are just the y and x values of points on our graph. The a value up front, that is our initial value, okay, so the a in front describes the initial value uh, of your exponential growth problem. b is the base, and x is just the exponents, and one interesting thing is that since this is a kind of exponential function, uh, you need to make sure that the exponent is a variable or has a variable in it, okay? So for it to be exponential growth, uh, you need to make sure that there is a variable uh, in the exponent, okay? So in terms of what the graph of an exponential uh, growth problem looks like, it's going to look like this here. And one thing I want to mention is that exponential functions that grow tend to grow really, really quickly. So in general, they'll grow very, very fast, okay? So that's one important thing to note. But they're always going to look something like this to some degree. Okay, so the next thing I want to go through is what, uh, what's a table of values for an exponential function, uh, exponential growth function look like, and what are the properties? So I'm going to use the table of values that we kind of made uh, in class today. So, of course, we have our x and our y columns, and my x is going to vary from 0 to 5, and my y values are going to make 3, 6, 12, 24, 48, and 96. So first thing I want to note is the first differences. Let's take the first differences uh, of the y values, and remember to do that, you just have to take the, uh, the difference between two consecutive y values. So, for example, uh, we'll do 6 minus 3 is 3, 12 minus 6 is 6, 12, 24 minus 12 is 12, 48 minus 24 is 24, and 98, uh, sorry, 96 minus 48 is 48. So our first differences are 3, 6, 12, 24, and 48. So notice that those are not constant first differences, and that means that this is definitely not a linear function, so we would be able to tell that anyways, because we know this is kind of exponential growth. So we know it's not going to be linear, but I just want to point out the fact that for exponential growth problems, you're definitely not going to have constant first differences. And if we took the second differences, um, so we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to subtract on the first differences uh, column there. Uh, we're going to get values of 3, 6, 12, and 24. I want you to notice that those are also not constant. And since the second differences are not constant, that means it's definitely not a quadratic function either, which, again, you kind of already knew. But I just wanted to show you that they're definitely going to be different for an exponential growth problem. So if you can't check to see if something is uh, exponential, sorry, exponential growth from the first or second differences, what can you do? Well, what we're going to be doing is instead of taking first and second differences, we are going to look at a ratio between successive y values. So, for example, if we look at the first two y values, 3 and 6, if we divide them by doing 6 divided by 3, we should get 2. But if we do the same thing for the next bunch of y values, 12 divided by 6 is also 2, 24 divided by 12 is also 2, 48 divided by 24 is 2, and 96 divided by 48 is also 2. So notice that we have a common ratio between successive y values, okay? So you can tell if a uh, table of values describes an exponential growth problem if you can find a common ratio. In other words, if you can divide successive y values and get the same number. Okay. So in general, successive y values in a table of values have a common ratio for exponential growth problems. Okay. So that's just some basic properties of exponential growth. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be looking at exponential decay, which is kind of similar. But uh, that's it for now. Take care, everybody.